the squad. It's your favorite RT with Uncle Tennessee's and I've been waiting on doing this one. I've been waiting on doing this one. Feeling some kind of way about it. I feel like she just so unsung outside of South Carolina and Gamecocks fam. You understand? I'm talking about old Swatkins. Ashlyn Watkins. My uncrowned sixth woman of the year as far as the SEC concerned. Okay? Y'all, y'all. I'm not going to argue about it. As far as I'm concerned, got my vote for six women of the year. Uh, I don't know anybody who did who did more as a six woman on a on a on a better team, but I'm not I'm not even going there. Uh listen. This is a Columbia kid that stayed home. She attended Cardinal Newman, McDonald's All American in high school, South Carolina Gatorade player of the year. She's been six foot tall since the fourth, since the fifth grade. Six feet tall since the fifth grade. <clears throat> I ain't been six feet tall in my whole life. She's been six feet tall since the fifth grade. Well, we y'all listen. If I'd had that height, my goodness. But third grade, she asked her mom to sign up to play some basketball. Organized hoops. She started off course like Parks and Rec, they said. And the AAU team showed up. And had her play AAU hoop in elementary. Y'all hear me? She was playing AAU hoop in elementary. She been dunking since she was 11 years old. What's that, fifth grade? In the McDonald's All-American uh, uh, All American game, well, All-American dunk contest, she became the third girl to win that event. Uh, I think that's Candace Parker won, Fran Bellaby won, and then Ashlyn. She also won four straight SCISA Class 3 state championships from 2019 to 2022 as a high school player. Coming out of high school, she was ranked the number four post player and the number 12 player overall in the class of 2022. She's Cardinal Newman's all-time leading scorer with 1,740 points and rebounder with 1,341 points and had 366 blocks in her career. <clears throat> she averaged 20.5 points, 15 and a half rebounds, and 2.9 blocks per game as a senior. She also won the state title as a volleyball player in 2020 and a runner-up in 2021. This year at South Carolina, y'all, she is averaging 9.6 points, 7 rebounds, 1.2 assists, and shooting 55.9 from the floor. I might as well just say 56. She does it all. She does it. She does it all. Uh, she's a 6'3 sophomore forward now, of course. She's already had two in-game dunks in her college career. One on the road, at, I believe it was Clemson as a freshman, and then one in CLA this year as a sophomore against Kentucky. I can't keep telling y'all. She, she's the sixth woman of the year as far as I'm concerned. Underestimated. Not by us, but I think by people outside of South Carolina. I just, I don't, I don't think that they fully understand the the complete package that Ashlyn Watkins is. Swatkins' game is going to translate to the WNBA very well. To me, she's already got a WNBA body. To me, she's already got the athleticism. She's already got the speed. She's already got the defense. And she's now coming into her own as far as confidence on the offensive side of the ball. She, she's concentrated so much on the defensive side of the ball that she, I don't think she realized that she had an offensive game. But the offensive game is there naturally, okay? <clears throat> so, like I said, she's finding her offensive voice. She was SEC player of the week this, this year. She had a 21-point game, a 15-rebound game, a six-block a six game, a four-steal game. She had 19 games this year, y'all, where she was in double-digit scoring. Nine games when she was in double-figure rebounding. She had eight games with four blocks or more. 83 total blocks this season. Second team all SEC. I don't know how. <coughs> Again, and I don't know how she was the sixth woman of the year either, but I, I, I don't know why I keep going back to that, y'all. It bothered me so much. I think that's why it took me so long to do this video, just because I can't believe that the only thing that she was doing, like, 
she had played so well this season that she had played to a point where it was like Dawn had to consider what what to do. She got to a point where she was playing so good this year, y'all. That and this is right around the time when Camila Cardoso went home to went home to Brazil to play for for her home team. But she was playing so good that Dawn had to think about what to do with these minutes. Do I do I start to start her? Does Chloe sit? What does that look like? Ashlyn, of course, had the, the, the focus of wanting to be sixth woman of the year. So instead of pushing the start, she wanted to make sure that she that she kept herself eligible to be a uh, sixth woman of the year. So she made sure that she came off the bench uh, enough for the rest of the year to to be eligible to, for, for consideration in that in that award, even though she wasn't successful in that. Luckily, because it could it could have created quite a quite oh, I guess not an issue. It would never be an issue because you know Dawn is very transparent with her players, and uh, who's playing the best in, in practice and, and, and showing up and showing out is probably who's gonna get that who's gonna get that run on the on the floor. So it wouldn't have been anything between the team, but it, it could have put her in a situation where she would have had to maybe make uh, some adjustments to to the uh, to the starting lineup. Um. I think that Ashlyn came into uh, South Carolina showing that she was going to be impactful, make a difference, especially on the defensive end. Uh, she played in 32 games, uh, scoring double figures at seven times, including two SEC games. Uh, she saw action in like 14 SEC games, two SEC tournament games, and four NCAA tournament contests uh, as a freshman. She made the NCAA tournament debut against uh, Norfolk State. And she had a team high three blocks in that game. And she was a force in the fourth game against Florida, putting up nine of her 12 points and 10 rebounds to earn her a sec her second career double-double in addition to a block steal and assist in just 16 minutes of play. So can definitely get out there um, and make an impact quickly um, and efficiently. Uh, I think that may be one of the staples of all of the players that are on our team anyway. Uh, but again, one of my favorite players on the team, Swatkins Watkins. Um, looking forward to having to have an opportunity to see her maybe get some more dunks now. Hopefully one in the tournament. Definitely want to see her have a breakout game here in the tournament. She has been pretty quiet since she didn't win that sixth woman of the year. And I wanted to just get back out there and get to playing. So um it seemed like she was kind of not necessarily getting her groove back, but but being a little bit more active on the offensive uh side of the ball these last two games coming into the tournament. So looking forward to to see what kind of game she has here going into uh, Friday. Should be a fun game against Indiana. Uh, definitely uh, gonna be playing in a neutral in a neutral uh, arena, so we won't be on we won't be uh, we won't have our home court advantage, but definitely we'll have the fans probably traveling with us. Definitely traveling with us. Uh, and if you are not on the road uh, live in the game with us, uh, Gamecocks in the building, come on and jump live in the chat with us at Sess Talk Sports. Hang out with us. We'll be talking Gamecocks, uh, giving live <clears throat> reaction to the game. Also talking other games that are going on for that day. Just uh, enjoying each other, talking women's hoops and having a good time. So come on over there, y'all. Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, like the video, stand the conversation. It's your favorite IT with Uncle Tendencies. It's <clears throat> Until next time, y'all, stay tuned. Talk soon. I'm out.